Oil tankers Part 3 VLCC A bulk super tankers are the largest tankers and the largest man-made mobile structures. They include very large crude carriers, VLCC, and bulks with capacities over 250,000 DWT. These ships can transport 2 million barrels, 320,000 miles cubed, of oil slash 318,000 metric tons. By way of comparison, the United Kingdom consumed about 1.6 million barrels, 250,000 miles cubed, of oil per day in 2009. Bulks, commissioned in the 1970s, were the largest vessels ever built, but the longest ones have already been scrapped. By 2013 only a few bulks remain in service, none of which are more than 400 meters long. Because of their great size, super tankers often cannot enter port fully loaded. These ships can take on their cargo at offshore platforms and single-point moorings. On the other end of the journey, they often pump their cargo off to smaller tankers at designated lightering points off coast. Super tanker routes are typically long, requiring them to stay at sea for extended periods, often around 70 days at a time. Chartering the act of hiring a ship to carry cargo is called chartering. Tankers are hired by four types of charter agreements. The Voyage Charter, the Time Charter, the Bare Boat Charter, and Contract of Affrightment. In a Voyage Charter the Charter rents the vessel from the loading port to the discharge port. In a Time Charter the vessel is hired for a set period of time to perform voyages as the Charter directs. In a Bare Boat Charter the Charter acts as the ship's operator and manager, taking on responsibilities such as providing the crew and maintaining the vessel. Finally, in a contract of affrightment or COA, the charterer specifies a total volume of cargo to be carried in a specific time period and in specific sizes. For example, a COA could be specified as 1 million barrels, 160,000 miles cubed, of JP, minus 5 in a year's time and 25,000, barrel, 4,000 miles cubed, shipments. A completed chartering contract is known as a charter party. One of the key aspects of any charter party is the freight rate, or the price specified for carriage of cargo. The freight rate of a tanker charter party is specified in one of four ways, by a lump sum rate, by rate per ton, by a time charter equivalent rate, or by world school rate. In a lump sum rate arrangement, a fixed price is negotiated for the delivery of a specified cargo, and the ship's owner slash operator is responsible to pay for all port costs and other voyage expenses. Rate per ton arrangements are used mostly in chemical tanker chartering and differ from lump sum rates in that port costs and voyage expenses are generally paid by the charterer. Time charter arrangements specify a daily rate and port costs and voyage expenses are also generally paid by the charterer. The Worldwide Tanker Normal Freight Scale, often referred to as WorldSkill, is established and governed jointly by the WorldSkill Associations of London and New York. WorldSkill establishes a baseline price for carrying a metric ton of product between any two ports in the world. In WorldSkill negotiations, operators and charterers will determine a price based on a percentage of the WorldSkill rate. The baseline rate is expressed as WS100. If a given charter party settled on 85% of the WorldSkill rate, it would be expressed as WS85. Similarly, a charter party set at 125% of the world skill rate would be expressed as WS125. Recent markets as of 2007, the chartering market is persistently volatile across all tanker sectors. The market is affected by a wide variety of variables such as the supply and demand of oil as well as the supply and demand of oil tankers. Some particular variables include winter temperatures, excess tanker tonnage, supply fluctuations in the Persian Gulf, and interruptions in refinery services. In 2006, the sustained rise in oil prices had only a limited impact on demand. It was a good year across all segments of the tanker market segments, but not as good as 2004 and 2005. Amidst high oil prices, geopolitical tension, and fears of disruptions to the oil supply, growing demand was the main driving force in the tanker shipping market for the year. As demand grew moderately in the United States and Western Europe, expanding economies such as China fueled exponential growth in demand. Despite these strengths, each of the five tanker freight indices dropped during 2006. Product tanker demand increased in 2006 due to economic expansion in Asia, especially China and India. However, average time charter equivalent earnings for these ships decreased compared with the two prior years. In 2006, time charters tended towards long term. Of the time charters executed in the year, 58% were for a period of 24 or more months, 14% were for periods of 12 to 24 months, 4% were from 6 to 12 months, and 24% were for periods of less than 6 months. 
The average one-year time charter rate for a five-year-old tanker of 280,000 metric tons have dead weight varying from $56,500 per day in December 2005 to $53,000 per day in September 2007 with a high of $64,500 per day in September 2006. The first half of 2007 was relatively strong, but in the second half rates dropped significantly. A sudden rise in oil production, longer transport routes, and slow steaming because of high bunker prices led to a shortage in tonnage towards the end of the year. Overnight, VLCC rates climbed from $20,000 per day to $20 billion, $3 million, $1,000 per day, and even higher numbers were recorded. From 2003, the demand for new ships started to grow, resulting in 2007 in a record-breaking order backlog for shipyards, exceeding their capacity with rising new building prices as a result. This resulted in a glut of ships when demand dropped due to a weakened global economy and dramatically reduced demand in the United States. The charter rate for very large crude carriers, which carried 2 million barrels of oil, had peaked at $309,601 per day in 2007 and has dropped, as of 2012, to $7,085 per day, far below the operating costs of these ships. As a result, several tanker operators laid up their ships. Prices rose significantly in 2015 and early 2016, but delivery of new tankers was projected to keep prices in check.